in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host of this particular program known here on the internet, or some of y'all still call the World Wide Web. I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snuffin' Up 7. I am your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would hope that you would bear with me within the next few minutes, as I have been on hiatus, and I am a little bit rusty making my uh, videos. It's taking a little time off. And some of you have grown to know that I have been on hiatus because of great change that has come to my personal life. And within that also comes great change to this ministry that I call the Realities Temple on Earth, of which if you are now looking at the new logo, it is now called the Reality Temples of Peace <clears throat> on Earth. Excuse me. I will explain some of these things as we uh, speak today and also in the future. And with that change, in my personal life, many of you have grown to know that your brother here has jumped the broom, as they say in old slave time, uh, gotten hitched, gotten married. <clears throat> and with married life comes change. Uh, with married life comes, some, comes with some, some things that perhaps we were not used to being a single person, being a bachelor. But within that change, it is for the best. With that change comes to this ministry and to my own personal life, balance. I would like to say thank you all for your well wishes. Thank you all for your condolences and all those things that uh, bring us wellness to uh, this union with myself and my new wife. Uh, her name is Aliyah Muhammad Allah, of course, Ibn Ra. I am also very shocked, and maybe this is a wonderful sign that I've gotten very little negativity from my union uh, with this sister in uh, matrimony. And that is that is a good thing. Change is beautiful. Change is wonderful. Again, it brings to us new life and it brings balance. It is always wonderful when men and women come together and form a family and bring balance to our lives. This is something that is missing in the lives of the descendants of slaves born in America. And we suffer because we lack the balance between the black man and black woman and our children. I would tell you point blank that married life is going to um, get a little used to, but when it's all said and done, it is beautiful when you have so much love in your life. Again, the descendants of slaves born in America, we suffer due to the lack of being loved. And this love that we lack is not only in our personal relationships, but there's a lack of love even in our careers, our, our employment, in all the aspects of our life. There is a lack of love. There's a lack of res respect. 
but this is the life of living in a slave-like condition. And so many of us, we have decided to accept our fate. I will never get married. I will never have that good job that I want. Things will never go my way. So we come to social media and we vent because that's exactly what it is because we don't know what to do. So we vent and we target certain peoples to vent and we rant and we rage because we hurt so deeply inside. And some of us don't want to admit our hurt and our frustration. So we put on a mean face like, huh, you know, it's all, it's all good, but it's not all good because if it was all good, you would not be on social media complaining and being so frustrated. We complain about the Caucasian people. We complain about our mothers, our fathers, sisters, and cousins, and on our jobs, and even ourselves. As a student of this man, of course, many of you know that I am greatly influenced by my spiritual father, the only father I've really known, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He taught that with 10% dissatisfaction comes 10% change. 50% dissatisfaction comes 50% change. And now we've come to the point in our time that we are experiencing 100% dissatisfaction. Even those who have money, even those who have power are complaining. So we are now in the time period of great change. However, are we going to become the masters of our destiny or are we going to continue to allow others to lead us in certain directions that clearly for the last over 400 years have done nothing for the black man and woman in America? So I am so happy and I thank you so much again for your well wishes because I am in a wonderful place in life. And I want all of us, I want all of the single sisters, I want you married. I want all the single brothers, I want you married. I want all of us to be family. And so that is the mission, which of course it has always been the mission of this ministry, but now even more so, being a single person is different than now being a married person because this increases responsibility and the responsibility so that we may work so that our future generations can have a better life, a better uh, walking this path than we done. So as adult people, we must sacrifice and we must work hard so that our future generations become better. We cannot worry about what the prior generations did or did not do. Now the pressure and the responsibility falls upon us who are living today. I warn us due to our frustration, due to our rejection of truth. We have become also victims of social media vampires. There are those who know that you love yourself, that you want to love your black skin, your kinky hair, your broad nose and thick lips. You want to find a place where you belong. And so all over this social media, there are those who offer you delusion and false hope, trying to call you and make you something that you are not or no longer of. They know that you want to be loved. So they feed off your despair. You want a black woman but don't know how to get a black woman. So let, let us hate the black woman. So these vampires 
Feed off your frustration. Feed into your negativity. And you wandering around in this wilderness, not knowing where to go. And all the lions and all the hyenas seek to feed off your flesh. There are very few out here in this world that are really looking out for your best interest. And as they feed off your frustration, your hurt, and your pain, they become rich. They are celebrity seekers. How many of these organizations and individuals, some of them being around 30 years or more, what have they done for the black community? What are they doing for you as an individual except entertain your mind, feed your hurt and your pain, but offering little solution to your problem? We have become a very unhappy people, a very sad people lost no. in this wilderness and lonely. And that is the problem. We are so lonely. We don't know where to go. We don't know who to trust. And the vampires surround you, sucking off of your blood because they can smile, because they can entertain you and feed that in you that want and you have never gotten it. And the thing about us as black people, we become loyal to these leeches and we smile as some vampire puts their fangs in our throat and we become clones and zombies. That's why many of you don't understand this ministry because this ministry is not dedicated to the making of zombies. As time continues, you will see my wife and myself make videos. And I want you to see us when we disagree. I want you to see us having difference of opinion. And I want you to see how silver people, adult people, handle disagreement. But we also understand the common purpose and the common goal. The common purpose and goal is more important than anything. Married life is about compromise. Some of y'all can't stay married. Some of y'all can't hold relationship because you don't want to compromise. You're selfish. You only think about yourself. And you marry for the wrong reasons. You marry for money. You marry for a big butt. You marry for all kinds of crazy reasons. And you wonder why you are alone. And so the countless nursing homes and elderly places in America are filled with people who have nobody. Even their children abandon them. I see this myself as having relatives in these nursing homes and places. And you go in and, and most of these people are alone. They don't have nobody to come visit them and check on them or any of these things but at the height when they were young they thought they were invincible and I got friends and we found out very quickly when we experienced bad times who really are our friends all these people who you are loyal to all these vampires that suck your blood if you really need them will they be there for you and the answer is simply no. They are only there and only want to suck your blood. So in this new change of this reality temple, reality temples, we are seeking to form family bond. And within the family bond, we seek to form neighborhood. And from neighborhood, town. To take over cities. Why can't we take over a city in this nation that's crumbling apart? This is the perfect time. I heard people say the time and what must be done. But what are they really doing? Do they understand the time? Do they understand really what to do? This is not about me. See, I have only one brain. 
I know some things, and some of y'all might be impressed by some of the things that I might say. But I only have one brain. But when I combine my brain with that of my wife, and you will find very quickly that my wife is also one of the most powerful voices on this internet. <laughs> In fact, a great challenge to myself. But we're on the same team. That's a good thing because I'll be in bad shape, bad trouble <laughs> if, if she was on the, if, if we was on opposite side. But see, that's the thing about it, brothers and sisters. We have so much brain power, so much knowledge. We fight among one another. All that power should be as one. I am not your enemy. My wife is not your enemy. Our people are not the enemy. Our people are victims. And yes, our people act ratchet. They act violent towards themselves. But there's a reason behind those things. And when it all said and done, it goes back to what I said before. It is because of the lack of love. As a Muslim, when I was a younger person, wearing a bow tie, going up and down the streets, by myself, I was not afraid. Some of y'all are afraid of your, your own people. By myself, sometimes one, two in the morning with my final call newspapers running around telling them about the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I didn't feel no fear going among my people because those people recognized very quickly that this young man that was approaching them, I did not mean them any harm. Whether they accepted what I had to bring to them or not, they understood that this young man care for them. And people can feel love. People can, can feel when somebody actually cares for them. Even the ones that slam the door in my face. But when I would come later on because I was persistent. See, I was persistent. They began to realize that this young man cares about his people and care about us. So you can slam the door in my face. You can Talk about me and talk about my bald head or talk about me in any kind of manner that you want to. But when it's all said and done, I love us. I love us. And my wife loves us. We could be doing many other things. We could just be living our slave life because that's all we got here is a slave life. But see, I'm not comfortable in this slave life. And my wife won't let me or allow me, and I will not allow her to become comfortable in this life. We have better. Your vampires won't let you become better. This ministry is not about gaining followers. This ministry is about making leaders. Not leader. I'm not a leader. We're talking about leaders. From the adults to the children, as all should know what the path is, the purpose and the goal and how to get there. Regardless, as soon as a child is able to comprehend what must be done, that child should know. Because that child don't depend on a leader. The child is a leader in him or herself. So we suffer from a lack of love. A lack of genuine caring. I am so happy to be a married man. And I'll tell you this. It was scary. Just a thought. In fact, I never thought about it. Period. But when the right minds come together, how can you deny? I'm looking. And we should be looking for right minds. Serious persons. A change has come to this ministry. A change must come to us as a people. No more entertainment. We watch videos for entertainment. Black revolution and the change that is needed for the descendants of slaves born in America is not entertainment because in order to make a proper change, requires sacrifice. 
it requires pain just like that of a woman going through labor. When a woman goes through labor, I was told that the pain is just like if you take your bottom lip and try to pull your bottom lip over your head. That is excruciating pain. And if we are not willing to bear with the pain that is needed to birth a new generation, a new nation, then we continue to deserve to get what we are getting right now. And is that beautiful? And we are still experiencing pain. But out of the pain that we create for, from forming a new life, after that baby is born, look how happy everybody is. Look how calm the mother is. And the father is so happy and so proud. It is a wonderful thing to bring a baby into life. And that's what we are right now. We are a baby in the womb of this beast, ready to be born. A new people, a new nation. It is wonderful to look to Kemet and look to the ancient Israelites and all these different things that we that we have grown to adopt. But see, what you don't understand that you are greater. Those things are of the past. They're gone. You and I are a brand new people. The catalyst of a brand new life. In fact, don't you understand that there is fear? And do you know why we are so disliked? Because those who understand know that as we rise, somebody must fall. This nation that you love and you hold on to and you have become comfortable in, many of you even know that it is falling, slowly but surely. And if you stay on this boat, you're going to sink with them. And there's no need for us to sink because we don't deserve destruction. We don't deserve punishment. We are the victims. We got to get off the boat. We have been warned by some of our greatest leaders in time. And they sacrifice and they die so that we don't have to go down with this wicked ship. There's nothing in the United States of America that I love. Nothing. When the God in the scriptures told Lot and his family to leave Sodom and Gomorrah and don't look back, But that wife, she had to look back because there was something in Sodom and Gomorrah that she loved. I'm not going to look back and like Lot's wife turn into a pillow or a cake of salt. There's nothing here that I want. I don't want their music. I don't want their food. I don't want their love. There's nothing here. They should be allowed to be destroyed. The only reason why they have lived as long as they have is because they have us as hostages. Come up out of her, my people. So a change has come. This is not about me. Balance has come to this ministry. First it was man. And for the last five years, all by myself, I have been toiling. I've been talking. And to show you how dangerous I am, and not bragging about myself, but I want to show you how dangerous my words are. That Google itself and so many of the races tried to silence my voice. 60 channels destroyed. Nobody on this media faced that type of termination. Nobody. Nobody can make such a claim. And that is because my voice resonates not only among the descendants of slaves born in America. But they hear my voice in China. They hear my voice in North Korea and Africa. And all over this planet. I am just. Truth hurts. But for those who are, are able to look beyond the hurt. They see the reality. They see that truth. And they see the freedom and the justice and equality for all of us. On this planet. A second. Change has now come. 
I was alone, but now I'm no longer alone. Now I have balance. I have a wife who was doing the same thing that I was doing. We didn't know. But time has come, so now we cross paths. And from where I'm weak, she lifts me up. And from where she is weak, I can lift her up. And we come together, let's lift up our poor and suffering, confused people. The ancestors have already left us a blueprint how to get this job done. There's too much confusion. You don't have to come up with new ideas. Some of these people, they run around, I got to come up with a new idea for this and a new idea. There's no need for a new idea. Brother Talik is not coming up with new ideas. The new ideas have already been presented. A new culture have already been presented. A new flag has already been presented to us. The only thing we have to do now is take up the banner. But I will tell you this. Those things have been desecrated. They have been corrupted. So the only thing we're doing is making those things renew those things. And bringing them back forth and present them in the manner that they should have been presented years ago. This is the reality temple of peace on earth. Is that what you want? Aren't you tired of dying, black man? Aren't you tired of being raped, discriminated against, hated, not only in America but around the earth? It is time now that we get ourselves together. And I want to present to us exactly how we can do that. We! Did you hear what I said? I said, we! Brother Talik is looking for celebrity. No, Brother Talik is never looking for celebrity. You always hear me talk about the we. While others, your vampires, they talk about follow me. It's all about me. I am the divine. I'm the chosen one. Me! You never hear Brother Talib talk about me. I am the divine masculine, but my sisters gave me that title. Because I stand up and defend the black woman. That's why I accepted that child that title. Who am I to not accept the gift from my goddesses and my queens? That's why I accept the title. It has nothing to do with religion or spirituality. It was a gift from the woman that I love, that black woman. And she is the key, brothers. We must understand our functioning. We must understand her place. And we can do this when we come into a place where we can talk in a civil manner. I don't expect everybody to, to do this because many of us, although we are in a Physically, we are adults. We are surrounded by childish mentality. And those children will continue to rant and rave and make beautiful posts on Facebook. Beautiful videos on YouTube. I'm not interested in those things unless the video or the post causes change in the minds of the people. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. And that entertains children. I could care less about your beautiful posts and pictures on Facebook and your and your video that you make on YouTube. I could care less because if they're not causing the people to change, if the people in the streets we're still killing one another, we're still having these long lines at the liquor store. Our poor young women are still having these babies without a husband. And these young men don't want to be husbands. In fact, our poor young men are becoming more feminine-like all the time. And even some of y'all that claim that you tough and bold and soldiers and warriors, y'all don't like coming around me because I show you that you, you sort of girly yourself. You ain't ready for the real struggle. So this is for real people. This is the reality temples of peace on earth. I want to talk to us. And invite you 
to help me. Not, not just help me, but help us. The first step to recovery, brothers and sisters, we must admit we have a problem. And we have a serious problem. Black man, you have a problem with your black woman. And it should not be no problem because that woman is for you. That woman is for us. That's your mother. That's your sister. How could you hate this woman? There's a reason why she's in the condition. But at the same time, look at your condition as, as a man. We are all in the same boat. If the black woman is sick, that is an indication that the black man is sick. And if the black man and the woman is sick, then our children are sick. So there must be a great healing. And I'm wondering with all these persons, with all this knowledge, thousands who uh, advocate that of Kemet and thousands that advocate uh, Israelite teachings and thousands of Christians, why are our people suffering? That's my question. Why do we continue to suffer? Even in your own individual groups, y'all sick. You're not getting along. What's wrong? Because the first step to recovery is that you must admit that and confess that you have a problem and you don't want to admit that you have a problem. Because Jesus will fix it. Jesus is the answer. Muhammad is the answer. Yahweh is the answer. But when you look at the condition of the people, it's the same, in fact, has gotten worse. Because you have a problem and think you already have the answer and you don't. We as a people, the descendants of slaves born in America, we have money. Don't say that we're poor and broke. To my knowledge, if the black man and woman of America, if we were a separate nation from this wicked place, we would be the 10th richest nation on the planet. So it's really not about money. It's about how we spend our money, what we do with our money. We're not as broke as many claim. But we have money. But that money has not changed the condition of the people. We still are victims of raping, robbing, theft, murder among ourselves. But we have money. Even the rich black people, they argue and rat and rave. They ratchet and ghetto. Where is this? Something is wrong here. You have education. You have all these degrees on your wall. The condition of us. You vote. Some of y'all are married to Caucasian people. We got all these things, but the condition of us as a people have yet to change. What if something is, is wrong? But you live in fantasy and delusions. You don't want to admit that you have a problem. Because you have become a comfortable slave. You have learned how to love your sickness. And the problem persists. You claim that you know what to do, but clearly you don't know what to do. And as individuals, we continue to fail. As an individual, I will continue to fail because this problem that we face is so on such a level, one person can't do it. So what I'm going to ask of us is that we need to come together and take this brain and make it brains, plural. I hope that you understand what I'm, I'm saying to us. We must put these brains together. We must we must reject leadership and accept leaders. Is that a word? Leadership. Because I don't know enough. Do you know we have a nation to build? One silly leader cannot build a nation. You have to have architects. You have to have scientists. You have to have all people in education. This one brain, can't, one person can't do it all. I don't care how divine they claim they are. We need all these different things. So I need your help. We need your help. You need to help yourself. If not for, your, for yourself, what about our babies? 
What about your niece and your nephew, your son and your daughter? Your great grandchildren that you have not yet to see. This is what this is how the forefathers of this nation thought. They did not think about themselves at that particular time. They were thinking about their children, those that they will never see. They thought 20, 50, 100 years in the future. This is how we have to think. But we have to be the catalyst. We have to be the one to put our people on the right path. Once they know the path, once everybody knows the common purpose and the goal, they will get there. And just like Martin Luther King said, I might not get there with you, but you're going to get there. Or are we going to let Dr. King die in vain? Are we going to let Nat Turner and Harriet Tubman and all our brothers and sisters, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Master Farah Muhammad, are we going to allow their efforts to go in vain? I think not. I'm not going to do it as long as I have breath in my life. I could care less about what the Housewives of Atlanta is doing. I could care less about what such reality show is doing. I get great enjoyment out of this struggle. And see, that's the way you have to look at this struggle. You have to enjoy it. You have to breathe it. You have to eat it. That's why many of the people that you see or have seen on YouTube that was talking black liberation, you don't see them no more. Because they did not live it. They did not breathe it. They did not want it. Brothers, I know some of y'all, y'all still straight. <laughs> You're not gay. But even if you're gay, when you want a mate, when you want somebody, you know that effort that you put in trying to get that particular person. And that's the way you have to do with this struggle. You got to bring flowers to the struggle. Candy to the struggle. Call the struggle. You got to be there. You got to. You got. You got to make it part of yourself until you get it. And then once you get this, get the struggle. Then you want to get it pregnant and make babies with the struggle. Some of y'all, these vampires, have placed y'all into la la land. It's gonna take sacrifice. Look what George Washington and Patrick Henry, those people. It was not easy for them. Do you know how many Caucasian people died in order to form this nation? But at the same time, they go down in their history everlasting life. Every child must learn about George Washington. Every child must learn about Patrick Henry. Every child must learn about Benjamin Franklin. That's you and me at this particular time. We are the foreparents of this great nation. The destroyer of this Caucasian people's civilization. That's why we're hated. They know that we have the power. We have the knowledge. We have the potential. And we can do it. But as we rise, somebody has to fall. And so the enemy will do everything to you. Keep you drunk. Keep you watching pornography. Keep you seeking material things. To keep your mind off the real prize. And the real prize is to do something for yourself. And to bring forth a civilization. A people that this planet has never seen before. Of the original people. But now a better version of the original man. That's what we are. So let me say this very quickly. As an individual... We can do very little. But just like the Caucasian people in this nation, when they came together, they became unstoppable, invincible. And here we are. I was speaking with my wife and these Caucasian people, they when they first landed upon this soil, they were so into themselves that they refused the help 
of the native people because they understood what they their ultimate plans was and they didn't want the help of the native people they would rather die in their uh, their shacks that they made and times got so tough for them that they turned to cannibalism and this is recorded but this is what they went through in order to build and form what we live in today. So, again, I'm speaking to adult people. Physical age doesn't mean anything. So y'all who are childlike, continue your posting on Facebook. Continue your watching YouTube videos 24 hours a day. I am calling and asking for the adults to stand up and realize that this is something higher than ourselves, greater than ourselves, the greatest accomplishment known to humanity. We want to represent family here. We must come together as family. And from family comes neighborhood, and neighborhood comes town and city. We're looking for a nation and to destroy this civilization that have exploited us and murdered us for the last 400 years. We want to take it out of existence, and taking it out of existence, we destroy racism and classism and all these isms that have plagued not only black people, but all the people of this planet. Show them and be the leaders, not only of black people, but we are the leaders of all the people of this planet. Can you comprehend? Do you realize that? But you can't show them nothing with that of the past. We are looking into the future. And your brain gives us all the answers to everything that we have. And our women, when they are properly protected, when they are put, put in their proper state of mind, they produce the babies that would give us the answers to anything else that we have to deal with. The ancestors have already laid the foundation. The only thing we have to do now is just pick up the, the mantle where they left off. And we have taken our eyes off the prize because we have fallen in love with the enemy and we have fallen in love with these vampires. We must understand and apply. You cannot continue and you will not evolve among your slave master thinking that you're going to get better living here and among them accepting their culture and their way of life. Because the only thing that we as a people can be in this country is a slave. And a slave cannot dictate culture. A slave cannot dictate. Y'all talk about I'm a man. I'm a woman. Slaves cannot dictate manhood and womanhood. Only a free people can do that. Only a nation of people can do that. Otherwise, the only thing you can do is mimic your slave master. So, the only, so when you talk about manhood, the only thing y'all do is basically mimic the Caucasian racist man who hates his woman. And so y'all hate the black woman. It's not no shock to me. And the sisters, of course they wear the weave. Of course they wear all the makeup on their face because they copying their, their version of, the only version of womanhood that they know of. And that is the Caucasian woman. So why are all of you shocked? So I, I invite us to this gathering in St. Louis. And listen, now, there will be details in the description box of this video. We are meeting in St. Louis, February the 20th to the 24th, scheduled. So that we can meet in person, so we can meet our family in person. Some of us, we live so far apart or whatever, but this gives us a, a chance to meet in person, meet in the flesh. 
so we can come together and come up with policy and procedures, those things that we need to build a nation, to build family. This is not about religion. As you know, this ministry does not, does not represent any religion. However, we do respect religious belief. I come from the Christian church. I come from the mosque. Those things are still there. And when you hear me speak and hear me talk, the righteous principles are still there. If you want change, if you want family, if you want those with the same like minds, if you really want this, there's nobody else that's doing these things. It's up to us. The vampires put on a good show. Oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But the vampires don't show you love. And economically, they have not even given you a bubble gum machine. Every dime, every nickel, anything that you can do, we will show you what has been done with that. But there's much work that needs to be done. I wish to encourage you to join this ministry and become a leader. Join this ministry and become a foreparent. Nobody else out here is asking you to become a foreparent. They want you to follow them. Follow them where? But when you become a leader, you already know where you need to go. You don't have to follow nobody anywhere. They want you to be a child of God. When the time has come that you grew up and now you become God. They want you to pray to God. But when you become God, there's no need for prayer. Gods don't pray. Gods create. Gods make manifest what was imagination, make that a reality. This is what this temple is about. The evolution of the symbols and the rituals. Understanding those things. Not making them a religion, not being spiritual, but now just living a way of life. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that heaven and hell is just a condition of life. It's not in the sky, it's not under the ground. Is what the gods make it. And you have a God that has given us hell for 400 years. And until you, and it takes a God to deal with a God. And until you become God, you can't do nothing with this God. So we learning how to and we have become gods. And we're going to take this boy out once and for all. And he knows it. Because it's time. He was given a certain amount of time to rule. And he should have been kicked out a long time ago. But the vampires. And your lust. For the material things. That this devil can give you. His cars and his drugs. And, his, and all these different things. Make it fast seeming to you. But it's nothing. <coughs> Do you understand? That's nothing. You want celebrity? You want people to look up at, look up, uh, look up at you. You want to live forever. <laughs> if you become a foreparent, you will live forever. Our names will go down as long as these people exist. Our people exist. You'll go down in this history forever, greater than your master's degree. Greater than your multi-million dollar business. That's nothing. They have waited. We have waited for thousands of years for somebody to crush this civilization. It's us. We have the tools. 
if you want to use them. Some of y'all think too much. Y'all study too much. It don't even take all that. Just sit back. Put yourself in the right mood. All the answers will start coming to you. Much like what y'all call prayer. So, my family, and I especially want to talk to my listeners and subscribers and my Facebook friends. This is a serious time. I need your help in this effort. I want my family. I consider you family. We need to come to St. Louis in February and more details will be placed in the description box and I will make videos speaking about those updates. But immediately you need to send us an email, phone call, let us know your intent. As soon as possible, we need to meet each other, socialize with one another. The meeting of the gods. All these other suckers ain't gods. When you come to this ministry, it is the most powerful ministry on YouTube and the internet, period. When you come here, there's nobody else can touch you. They can't do nothing with me by myself. They can't do nothing with my wife by herself. They can't do nothing with you by yourself. So what happens when all this power comes together under one roof? Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. This is your time. And even those around you who might not support it, but watch what they'll do as we begin to build, as we begin to make moves. It's scary, of course. It's a little scary and whatever, and we don't really know certain things, but you got to venture out. Look at these Caucasian people getting in spaceships, going out. There's no air. There's no grapefruits and, 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 and beautiful things out in space. Somebody took a chance to explore new worlds. We're not going to explore new worlds. We're going to make a new world. It's your time, black man. It's your time, black woman. It's us. And for those of you who cannot, for whatever reason, attend, donate to this cause. $25, $50, $75, $100, whatever you can to make this effort a success. It's not a success for me. It's a success for us. More details coming. With that said, Thank you for listening. I hope to see you in St. Louis. Immediately, as soon as possible, call, send an email. Let us know that your intent, that you want to help in this effort so that we can get this thing to rock. And as soon as we get to rocking, the vampires and this civilization is in trouble and is all crumbling down. And as they crumble, we go up. It's your time. Black people, we suffered enough. It's time to get these this beast off our back once and, once and for all. And the condition of life called heaven now make itself manifest because after all this hell, we deserve it. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra, for myself and my, my wife and the Reality, Reality Temples family. Peace and respect you.